What if I told you there was a build that put together the best things of invisibility, player resilience, staying alive, and also being able to dish out DPS in one build? If you're struggling right now to find players to do end game PvE content, or if you're just trying to get better at end game PvE content, this build will definitely help you. First off, this is going to be an Arc Hunter build. I know you're thinking invisible. Well, how do you do the far hunter build? Well, one of the keys you're going to need for this build is you are going to need Assassin's Cow. Now, with all of the abilities to focus engrams, especially exotic engrams, or get exotics from either the Neo Moon event or doing Lost Sectors, there's so many ways. There's probably no ex excuse not to get this if you want it. This, what makes this particular exotic very overpowered is that when you do a melee hit, a powered melee hit, you become invisible for a period of time. And it depends on what type of enemy you're killing. In addition, it also depends on how you're killing that enemy. If you're killing the enemy with your powered melee, then it, you go up from minors being six seconds of invisibility up to elites being nine, mini bosses being 12 and a half, and bosses being 13. So that sounds like a lot. Finishers are even better. If you're using a finisher, everything except a minor is 13 seconds. And then for a minor, it's 10 seconds. So this is really useful in this build in that you're going to see later how we use this build. You're going to have your powered melee up constantly. Then obviously, if you're doing some amount of damage to things and you can finish them, you can get your invisibility all over the place. And the great thing about using Assassin's Cow to do this versus a void build is then you have the ability to do other things to protect yourself, but also to dish out damage and to control areas. Of course, being an Arc Hunter build, this is all going to be gathered around Gathering Storm. And one thing about Gathering Storm that's great, especially when you're doing endgame content solo, is it's going to allow you to do damage against a boss without doing anything else. So if nothing else, even if for some reason you don't get other damage on the boss, you have to go hide, you have to protect yourself, you do know each round that you have for DPS where you have a super, you're going to do some level of damage. In addition to that, this is going to be very melee focused because, again, remember, we need our powered melee. So to get that, we're going to use Gambler's Dodge. And what Gambler's Dodge allows you to do is when you dodge near an enemy, you're going to get your powered melee back immediately. Also, you have Combination Blow. Combination Blow increases your melee damage and stacks three times. Successful kills refill your class ability, which is your dodge, and restore a small amount of health. So the key thing you're going to do to set this up is you're going to do a melee damage, and you're potentially not going to kill the, uh, the enemy when you first do that. Then your dodge. That dodge is going to give you your melee back. You'll kill it, especially if it's a red bar or something like that. When you do that, you're going to kill that enemy, and then when you do that, you're actually going to get your class ability, which is your dodge back, and a little bit of health. So if you keep doing this around a bunch of adds, you're going to stack this up to three times. You'll see Combination Blow times three. This will give you a much greater chance of taking out even yellow bar enemies just with you and your melee alone. No weapons, anything else. The other thing you're going to use is Flow State. Flow State, when you defeat a jolted target, it makes you amplified. Parts of what we're going to be doing with some of the aspects and fragments are going to allow you to do that a lot. So you're going to be amplified a lot, which allows you to become faster. While amplified, you gain your dodge quicker and are more resilient while dodging, and you have a reload speed buff. So again, this will make you more resilient, and it'll allow you to get your dodge quicker, which will go back into doing your gambler's dodge, which will then allow you to get your melee back. The final piece of this is lethal current. After you dodge, which you're going to be doing constantly, your next melee has increased range, will jolt the target, which again goes back into flow state, and creates a damaging aftershock. So again, what you can see here is you're constantly going to be able to go invisible, right? Because of Assassin's Cow, when you get melee kills, you'll be able to do that. While you're invisible, you're going to be able to then do dodges, get your melee back, kill another thing. You're also going to be getting, you know, increased resilience. You're also going to be getting Amplify, which is going to get your dodge back. So again, you can see all of these things kind of synergize. So the first thing this is all going to do is allow you to get invisible as quickly as possible, stay invisible, kill things and control the main battlefield which in some of this end game content when you're trying to solo you're doing it by yourself and if you are in one of these pieces of content where you have a lot of taken that are respawning a lot of scorn or ignoring things that can kind of take you out this is really important for staying alive even sometimes more than dealing with the bosses to these aspects 
Then we're gonna add a couple of fragments. First off, Spark of Feedback. Spark of Feedback, taking melee damage if something hits you, briefly increases your outgoing melee damage. So this will just go into the fantasy of the melee and killing small adds. This is only needed if for some reason you get in trouble and you need to be able, you know, you take some melee damage and you wanna be able to take another add out so you can get invisible again. Spark of Instinct, while critically wounded, Taking damage emits a burst of damaging arc energy that jolts target. So again, this is getting back into that jolt, which you're trying to do. It's also, is kind of like a get out of jail free card, right? Because at that point, if you're critically damaged, you want to try to get protected. And doing this will, will basically lock in some of the adds and give you some of your abilities quicker. There's Spark of Resistance. While surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. So basically, if you're surrounded by three enemies or more, again, a lot of smaller adds, you're going to get like a 25% damage resistance. That's really key here. That allows you to, again, even if you're at tier 10 and you're not taking as much damage, this will further reduce that. Then Spark of Recharge. While critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerate more quickly. So again, this is going to let you get your melee quickly again, just like everything else is, if you get critically wounded. So again, just like what we talked about with Spark of Instinct, these are two fragments you're going to use if you're close to death. And they're going to allow you, even if you're close to death, to be able to then go use your melee, because you're getting it back quicker, to go invisible. Maybe you have to go hide and come back and restart things. So in addition to that, you know, what you're going to put on your, on your different pieces of armor is going to really depend on what you're doing and what content you're doing. I would say, obviously, for your, your helmet, I usually use ammo finders and scouts and siphons so that I am dropping orbs, but I'm also able to get ammo, right? Um, that's one of the primary reasons. But again, it's going to be dependent on the, the content you're doing. On your arms, I'm typically going to do something like melee kickstarter, which allows you, when you collect an orb, to give you armor charge, which is going to allow you to help with your surge and your damage, right? And that's key in the solo content where you're trying to do those things. On your chest, I'm, I'm probably going to use resistance. Again, depends on the piece of content you're in. You might use sniper damage resistance. If you're in something where you have a lot of snipers that are going to hit you, you might use conductive dampener. You might want to use things that actually help you with different burns. But again, that's going to vary based on the content that you're playing at the time. On your legs, I'm primarily going to use surges. And again, it just depends. Like I like to use a lot of arc here, so I might use something that does arc surge. But again, it's flexible. You could do surges for different, you know, depending on what weapons you're going to use. Because again, each encounter is going to be a little bit different. And then finally, on my cloak, what I'm typically going to do is I like using Empowered Finish, which basically will grant you an armor charge whenever you do a finisher when you have none. So this is a good thing, too, because sometimes when you're doing a finisher with this build, you're typically going to be in a little, a little bit of trouble. So if you're using it, this gives you a, basically another armor charge, which is going to allow you again to do some additional damage when you're dealing out damage. I'm also going to use Time Dilation, which your, your decaying armor charges have a longer duration, which allows them to stick around. Again, that's primarily for your DPS phase. The final thing you want to do, and why you want to do this right now, is that there is a mod for this season, if you're watching this within Season 23, that's Solo Operative. This allows you to do extra damage when you're solo in content. So this is something you unlock in the last rung of your seasonal artifact. And again, you'll need to grind up to get there. But this alone will make it super easy with bosses because this build is really great at doing area control, containing adds. Obviously, with your super, you're going to be able to do damage over time regardless if you don't have great weapons to damage with. But with having solo operative, it's just going to build into that. So that's why... If you're looking to do endgame content right now, solo, now's the time to do that. Do that before we all get deep in final shape and are tied up with other things. Do that now, especially if you're having problems with getting additional people to play content with. And that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this build is super easy. Doesn't require a ton of thinking, to be honest with you. Um, if you aren't a hunter and you're used to trying to kind of zip around, use your mobility, go invisible and again typically you're used to doing that on your on your void hunter try this out this also is something where you can extend the build and use other melee options on other subclasses but with arc one of the things i love about arc is that it just everything kind of works well together and you get to do damage over time if you're super 
So again, it just works really, really well. Try it out. Let me know in the comments what you think. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.